Every gardener has heard that grass clippings are garden gold. They're free, they're full of nitrogen, and they seem like the perfect shortcut for feeding soil and building fertility. But here's the part that doesn't get talked about enough. Add them the wrong way, and they'll actually kill worms instead of attracting them. If you've ever spread a thick layer of clippings only to later find mats of foul-smelling slime and lifeless soil underneath, you've seen this problem firsthand. So why does it happen? And how do you use grass clippings so they benefit your garden instead of driving away the very worms that make soil thrive? Grass clippings turn deadly when they suffocate soil. The biggest mistake gardeners make with grass clippings is piling them too thick. When fresh clippings are layered in more than an inch or two, they quickly collapse into a dense airtight mat. Without oxygen, microbial activity shifts from aerobic to anaerobic, producing sour, foul odors and compounds that are toxic to both worms and roots. Worms need oxygenated pathways to move through soil, and when clippings seal the surface like a plastic sheet, they suffocate. The other danger is heat. Fresh clippings are extremely high in nitrogen, and when they're piled thick, they heat up just like a compost pile. That spike in temperature can cook surface soil and drive worms away from the area. What started as a free soil builder can end up as a worm-killing blanket. The correct way to use grass clippings is as a thin mulch. The key to turning clippings from a hazard into a benefit is moderation. A thin layer, no more than half an inch at a time, provides surface nutrition and moisture retention without creating a mat. Spread lightly, clippings dry into a soft mulch that breaks down gradually, while still allowing air and water to pass through. For worm health, it's best to apply clippings in repeated light doses, rather than all at once. For example, after mowing, sprinkle a dusting of clippings across your raised bed, just enough to cover soil, but not enough to smother it. So, after you've spread your grass clippings, just wait a week or two until they've dried and broken down, then go ahead and add another light layer. Over the course of the season, this steady feeding creates a worm-friendly environment where microbes break down clippings into humus without ever cutting off airflow. Another proven method is to balance fresh nitrogen-rich clippings with carbon-rich material. A ratio of about two parts dried leaves, shredded paper or straw to one part grass clippings works well. Mixing the two before adding them to the garden really helps prevent matting and neutralizes excess nitrogen which otherwise can burn worms and roots. One simple way to do this is to keep a bin or pile where you layer clippings with dry browns. Each mowing, add a layer of clippings about 2 inches thick, then cover it with 4 inches of dried leaves or shredded cardboard. After a couple of weeks, the materials mellow together, and you can spread them in your beds as a safe, balanced mulch. Worms thrive in this mix because it offers food, air, and moisture without the suffocating heat of straight clippings. If you have large amounts of clippings, the best approach is to bury them in narrow trenches rather than spread them on the surface. Dig a trench 6 inches deep in your bed, fill the bottom with 2 inches of clippings, then cover with soil and mulch. This method prevents surface matting, traps odors underground, and sets up a slow-release feeding zone that worms migrate toward. In a 4x8 raised bed, two parallel trenches filled this way will feed worms for weeks. The soil cover moderates decomposition, keeping it from overheating, while also encouraging worm tunneling as they move in and out of the buried material. By spring, these trenches break down into rich worm castings, effectively turning your bed into a living compost system without ever hauling materials. The timing of when you apply clippings matters as much as how you apply them. Fresh clippings are best used in spring and early summer, when decomposition is fast and soil life is highly active. Late in the season, when cooler weather slows breakdown, thick applications can linger too long and start to sour. In fall, clippings are best mixed with carbon materials or buried in trenches to avoid creating slimy mats that last into winter. Moisture also plays a role. Worms thrive when clippings are moist but not waterlogged. 
If a dry spell leaves your mulch crispy, water lightly so decomposition continues and worms remain active. On the other hand, if rains are frequent, make sure layers stay thin enough to dry between storms. So, here's the thing. Balance is the key. Clippings should decompose steadily, not just sit stagnant. So, the real lesson here is that grass clippings are powerful, but uh, they really must be handled carefully. If you pile them on too thick, they can actually suffocate and burn your soil. But if you keep things balanced, bury them, or just apply in moderation, they become one of the easiest worm feeding tools a gardener has. Worms don't die because grass is bad. They die because clippings are misused. Once you manage them properly, your raised beds and in-ground plots turn into worm havens, full of castings and natural fertility. Grass clippings are either the fastest way to ruin worm populations or the cheapest way to feed them, depending on how you use them. Spread lightly, mix with carbon, or bury in trenches, and you'll never see worms flee from your garden again. Instead, they'll multiply, leaving behind rich castings that keep your soil alive year after year. If this guide helped you rethink how you use grass clippings, subscribe to Hydrohaven and share it with your fellow gardeners. The way you manage free materials like clippings makes the difference between killing worms and creating thriving soil life, and every gardener deserves to get it right.